एवरीवन सो टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट वेलॉग ऑपरेटर्स ठीक है सो इन द लास्ट क्लास व्हाट वी हैव स्टार्टेड सो फार तो जस्ट अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन आई विल बी गिविंग यू बिफोर आई स्टार्ट दिस टुडेस लेक्चर सो आई विल बी जस्ट गिविंग यू अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ व्हाट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन द लास्ट क्लास ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सी वी विल बी थ्रोइंग लाइट टुवर्ड्स टुडेस टॉपिक व्हिच इज व्हाट यू आर सीइंग वेरी लॉ ऑपरेटर्स ओके ऑपरेटर्स पे आज हमें थोड़ा सा ध्यान देना है ठीक है ओके फाइन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बिफोर वी मूव फॉरवर्ड इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड सी वॉट वी हैव स्टडीड सोफा वॉट यू आर सींग योर ओके वॉट यू आर सींग योर वी हैव लर्न अबाउट अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ वेरी लॉग ओके हाउ वेरी लॉग इज you know came into existence how it is uh, helpful in uh, coding your hardware circuit how you are designing a circuit how you are making a circuit to perform a particular task okay so this is what we have studied in the last class which was all about introduction okay so after introduction what we did we have seen that what could be the structure how we have to write the structure see every language has certain sorts of syntax okay which you need to follow whenever you are writing some module or some coding okay so what we have studied in that we have learned how we will be writing a module or code for or a program wherever we are writing very long code okay so we have seen that structure also after that, what we have seen we have seen about this lexical tokens okay what are these lexical tokens i must tell you what are these lexical tokens what you see here see identifiers okay i'm um, sorry yeah so what what are you seeing here what you have you have lexical tokens identifiers then white spaces then comments then numbers then operators and then keywords okay so first of all what we have learned in identifiers that it is the name which is given to any of your what i can say variable any function name okay any uh, instantiation name okay so these are used to name some module variable or something okay so this we have learnt about identifiers next white spaces also that our very long compiler what does it do it actually removes or uh, wherever you are writing some code it uh, excludes the white spaces okay it doesn't count okay after that we have also studied about comments means long comments short comments theek hai to make your code more readable more understandable what does it do we actually what do we do we use comments for increasing the readability then we have studied okay this numbers i'll be telling you see we have we all have uh, studied in digital that we have four basic number systems available right means uh, like uh, binary number systems then decimal number system octal number uh, number system and then hexadecimal number system okay so how we be declaring here a number in very long we have to understand like you see what we usually do suppose i have to write something some i variable is there so i used to declare this i in this way theek hai as in used to write int i is equal to c okay so this was taken as a number inside i right but here some technique is change which i'll be discussing in today's lecture now coming to this part this we will be studying in detail in today's lecture operators operators are basically something that works on operands means some operation that you need to perform on operands what do we call that as operators okay for example you guys have learnt mathematics right see mathematics also it has some tools mathematics is not only a subject it's a language so what do we do we usually do some sorts of operations there like plus addition minus mean subtraction right multiplication division and so on so similarly here also we will be doing the same thing 
we have to see that what are the different variabilities of operator that we will use in Verilog. Getting it? After that, we will be discussing something about the section which is keywords. Now the question comes, what keywords are? Okay. See, already in Verilog, we have some keywords which are already predefined in Verilog library. Okay. So those keywords you will be using directly. Like uh, in last class also we have discussed some of the keywords, uh, for example, assign, right? So assign is a keyword which has a predefined meaning inside Verilog library, okay? So that you need to understand that these are already predefined, they are uh, assigned for a certain work, okay? So you cannot use those keywords as your identifier, as your variable name, as your function name, okay? So this you have to keep in mind for, for your keyword section, okay? So uh, this was all about lexical tokens. What do you call this whole entire family as? Lexical tokens, okay? So lexical tokens I have also um, told you. After that, what we have studied? Data types, okay? So basically two types of data are available here in very low. What are they? They are nets and registers okay so this also we have discussed after that we also have discussed level of abstraction what does it mean level of abstraction means how many methodologies you follow you do whenever you code something in very low right okay so basically we have four what were they they are structural or structure or gate level I can say okay then we have RTL or uh, you can say data flow also okay data flow modeling after that data flow what does we have what do we have we had behavioral behavioral modeling and then switch out of all these, I have told you that we use this very rarely because millions of transistors are required okay, to make a simple circuitry, small circuitry. So we actually do not use this much and probably mostly used technology is this behavioral. Getting it? And we also use these two data flow and then structural. So we have discussed. So now we will be dealing with these also in detail. But today's topic of discussion would be today's topic of discussion would be operators okay fine before i tell you something about the uh, operators as i told you that uh, we were discussing about keywords now let's understand keywords have some special meaning in very long means they are designed for some specific function suppose you are using switch cases right so switch case Whenever you will be using switch case here in Verilog, you will see we will be writing this as case. Okay, so this case also has a special meaning that this will be used as a switch case. It has a purpose. If I talk about if, it, it also has some meaning. If I talk about else if, else if, it also has some meaning. Okay, so these things already have some meaning okay inside so that is what we have written that words that have a special meaning in Verilog are called as Verilog keywords Samaj mein hai aapko? after that see the examples are assign for module NAND these are all things even the data types if you are writing wire if you are writing reg so you cannot write anywhere your variable name or your identifier name or your module name as reg no you cannot do that okay so which is you have to keep in mind that you cannot use the predefined keywords as your identifier name. Okay. After that, see, it has uh, uh, it uh, cannot be used as identifier. This is the important part. I've already told you. Okay. And it is also used for some compiler director system and task functions. See, we also declare some sort of functions here. Some directors are there. You will be uh, meanwhile whenever I tell you about the compiler directors, I'll be dealing with this line, this whole line in detail. Okay. So, smooth about 
the today's contents what we will be covering so in this lecture i will to see these all are the operators these all are the operators that we will be studying okay but in today's lecture we will be discussing these two bitwise and logical operator okay so first of all i have told you what are operators operators are something that are working on operands and giving some results theek hai some result you are getting from operators okay so how it is getting done we will be discussing one by one first of all this is our bitwise operator see as its name suggests bitwise means it is working on individual bits of operands okay now the question comes what are operands see if i write suppose if i am writing a and b so here a and b these two are called as operands these two are called as operands and this is the operator okay this is the operator getting it so if i talk about bitwise so here as you can see it works on individual bits of operands okay for how it is working i tell you in the next slides first of all see how many bitwise operators are there it's a ones complement this symbol is called as the symbol is called as tilde okay the symbol is called as tilde this symbol of this caret or cap the symbol is called as caret or cap okay okay so what you see the first symbol is ones complement for ones complement you will have only one operand okay ones complement kya karta hai it will change all the zeros to ones ones to zeros if i talk about the binary number system so this is what it does how it does we will be explaining okay after that what does we have we have and also this is a bitwise and okay this symbol is bitwise or these have two operands see and operation perform karne ke liye we require two operands we require two operands okay so this is your bitwise And, and bitwise this is your bitwise or this is your bitwise x or okay this is your bitwise x or and this is along with the negation and then xor symbol you can write this way also you can write this way also either of the way would do this is your bitwise x not okay this is your bitwise x not now we will be discussing all these uh, bitwise operators one by one in detail okay now coming to the next part see here suppose we have a b and c these are three bit numbers how do we know these are three bit numbers what you see the range here 2 2 0 2 down to 0 means if i talk about a so it will have a2 it will have a1 it will have a0 these are the three bits for a2 getting it these are the three bits of A two, I mean A. Okay, A is of three bits. Similarly for B, similarly for C. These are three bit numbers. So what are we seeing here? First of all, we are taking the ones complement. Suppose we are storing C is equal to negation of A. That that means it is doing the ones complement. Okay. So how will the result be stored? Similar way. See, I have declared two down to zero here also, two down to zero here also. This. i have told you in the last class when we were discussing about vectors that whatever we have written in the similar way the result will be stored so what you are saying here in c2 we will have a2 complement in c1 we will have a1 complement in c0 we will be having a0 complement so we can example for that also suppose a is equal to 1 1 0 and you are writing c is equal to negation of a so all the bits will be Changed, reverse. So one will become zero, one will become zero, and zero will become one. So this will be your final result. Okay, this will be your final result. What is written? Vector A is of three bits. So all individual bits are complemented. That is what I have told you about bitwise. Every single bit on every single bit operation is getting performed. 
okay after that suppose suppose let's uh, uh, just assume that we have two scalars also we have f scalar and we have w as a scalar what is the meaning of scalar it would be of one bit vector it could be more than one bit right see these three were vectors now i'm assuming that f and w are scalars so what i'm seeing here i have given w is equal to 0 and then i'm writing f is equal to negation of w so what we are getting as 1 okay so i guess uh, here since um, this bitwise operator i have already told you so i think this bitwise operator is clear to you okay this is the first operator after that okay after that we will also be dealing with hand operator that bitwise and the first one we have discussed that was bitwise that was bitwise complement once complement now we will be discussing bitwise and okay so this will produce result this will uh, act in a way it will add the two bits how it will be adding two bits a2 will be added to b2 a1 will be added to b1 a0 will be added to b0 getting it so this way the result will be produced see suppose this you have a as 110 you have b as 011 now if i talk about how this result is coming what we have done we have we are writing a and b so individual bits are getting added 0 1 will be 0 1 and 1 will be 1 and 1 and 0 will be 0 okay so as you see this is performing an and operation so before i move we have to understand that what uh, uh, it's a digital question basically that what is the disabled input what is the disabled input for and gate okay so you have to think you can pause this video for a while and then you can think what is the disabled input by the time i will tell you the answer see well, uh, where do i write suppose i am making a and gate table we know 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 so what happens for a and gate we have output 0 0 0 and then 1 right means whenever a single input is 0 you are getting output as 0 means 0 is disabling your and gate to work after right so if if we have been asked that what is the disabled input for your and gate your answer has to be 0 okay suppose suppose this is your uh, and gate suppose i talk about one gate so what will happen 1 1 1 and then 0 then do the same thing if any of the input is 0 your output is becoming stable or saturating at 1 it's not changing your output so the disable input for non gate is also 0 okay? similarly i talk about or gate okay 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 what happens this way right this way you do things okay 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 this way if you do things then what happens here also if any of the input is 1 or any of the input is 1 your output is stuck to 1 your output is stuck to 1 uh, are you able to understand okay so so basically what i wanted to tell you that the disabled input for your or gate would be one because whenever you are applying when any one of the input for a uh, for a or gate is one your output is getting your uh, gate is actually maintaining the output at one only okay and for non also you can write the same way this will be one zero 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 so whenever your uh, your one of the input is one your output is getting stuck to zero so this disable and enable concept aapko aana chahiye theek hai chaliye hum kaha pe okay so we have discussed this individual bits are getting added together and we are producing the output okay now now we are taking some other example also for xor this also has some something different which we will be uh, discussing uh, after some time see how does the xor gate table works 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 xor is called as 
इक्वालिटी डिटेक्टर सो वेन एवर ऑपोजिट इनपुट आर दे आर इट विल बी वन फॉर सेम इनपुट इट विल बी जीरो दिस इज योर आउटपुट ओके सो हेयर वट विल हैपन ए एक्सॉर बी मीन्स इंडिविजुअल बिट्स ऑफ ए will be exhort with individual bits of b and they will store the result in c how come c2 me oh okay i'm sorry this is wrong this is wrong you have to understand how how it will happen c i'll write here c2 me what will happen a2 okay exhort with b2 okay then c1 me A one XOR when B one in C zero we will be having A zero XOR when B zero. Did you? Similarly, things are happening here also. We have taken the example. This is one one zero A me hai and B me have value zero zero one. So how is it happening? Opposite opposite bits output would be one. Opposite bits output would be one. Opposite One. So answer is one, one, one. Getting it? How this answer is coming? How the bits are getting stored? Okay. So um, one thing suppose if I have declared that uh, as um, if just for an example, I am telling you. Suppose I have taken t as um, zero down to two. Okay. And a and b are same. Like uh, a is two down to zero. And then b is two down to zero. See how here the result will be happening. How the, here the result will be stored. You have to understand what will happen. A two will be. First of all, this line is wrong. A two will be exhort with b two. Okay, a two will be exhort with b two. But this time the result will be stored in p of zero because we are zero is the MSB, two is the LSB, okay. So how can this will be your first result? Then in C one, then in C one, what will you have? You have A one XOR with B one. Then in C two, you will have A zero XOR with B. Zero. How you are declaring? That is also very much important. How you are declaring? What kind of uh, representation? What kind of range you are selecting for your variables, for your vectors? That is also important. Okay. So this you have to keep in mind. Okay. So I guess till here things are clear to everyone. Now let's move on to next slide. Okay. So what you are seeing here. Have you seen that this is working as a XOR? XOR कैसे काम करता है भाई? XOR के लिए टेबल हम देख लेते हैं चलिए। XOR कैसे काम करेगा? Suppose we have input as zero 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 one one zero and then one one. It is called as a equality detector. Means whenever we have same input, it will see same input. It will have output one. Opposite input पे output is Zero. Okay. So this is the basically the output. Of, suppose this is A and then B. This is your output for X nor. It is also called as equality detector. Okay. So what we are seeing here, this is the symbol, the tilde plus a uh, XOR symbol we are using, which is caret symbol here we are using. So let's come to the example. A we have taken as one one zero. Okay. B we have taken as zero zero one. Right. So, see the result. Unequal inputs. Unequal input zero, zero. Unequal input zero. Unequal input zero. So our output is zero, zero, zero. I hope this is clear. Okay. So how you will be performing x nor in very long? This you have to keep in mind. Okay. Now things you need to remember in bitwise operation. This is very important. That whenever you are performing an AND operation, okay. See this table. You need to uh, make this table very much clear to your brain. Okay, how it is happening, what is happening, and how things are getting done. Abhi, I have given you concepts. I have given you able and disable. Ka. You will understand here also. Okay, one by one. See what happens whenever zero 
angled with zero, what is the result? Zero. Zero with one angled, zero. Zero ke saath, whatever you are putting, that will result in zero because zero acts as a disable input for your angle gate. So, look here. जीरो के साथ अपने कुछ भी किया है तो जीरो जीरो के साथ अपने कुछ भी किया है तो वो जीरो है दूसरी चीज वॉट यू टू कीप इन माइंड कि वेन एवर यू आर टेकिंग टू डोन्ट केयर्स टूगेदर सो यू डोंट नो वॉट वॉट इज एग्जैक्टली द वैल्यू ऑफ डोंट डोंट केयर सी डू नॉट नो एनीथिंग अबाउट इट राइट सो वेन एवर यू आर ट्रीटिंग टू वेरिएबल्स विच हैल्यूज आर नॉट नोन टू यू सो वट एवर ऑपरेशन यू आर परफॉर्मिंग सो दैट रिजल्ट विल ऑल्सो बी नॉट क्लियर टू यू सो एवरी टाइम टू डोंट केयर्स Whenever you are operating on two don't care, your answer would be don't care. You do not know what its answer could be. Here, see here, don't care and don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. We do not know the answer. Okay, we do not know the answer. Getting it? We do not know the answer. If both of you are don't care, how how would you be able to know the answer? Okay. So this is about your AND gate. Any of the input is zero, output is zero, and then one and one will result in one only. Okay, so this is about your AND gate. Now see here, OR gate. OR gate means what is the disable input? One. So if any of the input is one, your output is one. Okay, but zero is zero, zero OR of zero, zero plus zero is zero. What you see here? Uh, what you see here? Don't care plus zero. Obviously, if you have don't care plus zero, suppose this don't care has value one or zero. These two values are possible. So one plus zero will result in one. Zero plus zero will result in zero. So you are seeing the replication of your don't care value. So that is why I have written that don't care plus zero is don't care itself. Zero plus don't care is again don't care itself. Okay. Now coming to the XOR also. What you are seeing here, whenever see it is what I have told you, it is a inequality detector. I'll write here, XOR is a inequality inequality detector. Okay, detector inequality detector है आपका XOR. अभी क्या यहाँ क्या रहा है? Zero 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 opposite bits so zero and one will result in one. Now what you are seeing zero ka if we are taking XOR with don't care. इसको भी समझ लेते हैं थोड़ा सा. If we are taking zero XOR with don't care. So जब भी आपको इस तरीके का कोई question आता है that you are taking one variable and it has some value and your other variable has no value. Suppose it's a don't care. So you have to understand very clearly in your brain that. This don't care. How do you understand what will be the result? Just take the values. Only two possible combinations we know for don't care, right? We can have zero. We can have one. Okay. So see, if zero is XOR with zero, your answer would be zero. Your answer would be one. So whatever the value you have taken here, you are getting same here replication. This is the replica. Means zero XOR X with also be X. See here, ah uh, zero XOR X with X, getting it? If we are taking one XOR X, this also you can take as example one XOR X. Take two values for your don't care zero and one. So you are taking one XOR with zero, one XOR with. What will happen? Will it inequality? Yes, inequality. No, it will equal be to zero. What we are seeing here? Here, here the application is not getting done. Basically, यहाँ पे आपका क्या हो रहा है? It is getting complemented also, so you do not know what could be the value. Okay, so that is why I write don't care. We do not know what the value is. Okay, similarly, similar thing happens for x nor also. Whenever the two things are don't care, we do not know what the value is. For one also, if you are seeing, see, it has, um, if I tell you something about uh, like uh, what are the enable and disable inputs for x nor and x nor, how they work. Here you have seen that. What you have seen that XOR is working as a inverter when it is dealing with one. Very important point. Very important point to mention to remember that whenever you are dealing with XOR, okay, and you are applying. Suppose this is a your XOR gate, and you are applying one of the gate. May one of the input you are applying is one. So whatever you 
you are giving here, suppose you are giving x, suppose you are giving a, so the result would always be in complemented form. Very important point to remember for XOR. Similarly, if you see for x XOR also, see, uh, if I am taking for x XOR, uh, don't care. So, I can take two values for this don't care. It could be either 0, it could be the 1. Suppose I am taking this again, x naught. What will be the result? Just tell me what will be the result. Uh, here, yeah. What will be the result? 0, x naught of 0. Similar, like bit. So, the output is 1. 0, x naught of 1. The output is 0. So, what do you see here? That 0 is working as the that input for your XNOR gate, which is actually uh, making the another input inverted. Means, if you have, say if you have this XNOR gate, suppose, and you are applying here the input A. This is your A, spare for my writing. So, this is the input A, and you are applying here the input 0. So, what will happen? This will be your complemented output. But, what if you apply 1? Chalo, 1 ke liye we will see. Uh, where do I put it? 1, suppose you are doing x nor with don't care. Take it. Assume two values for don't care. What will happen? 0 and then 1. Okay? So, 1 x nor with 0, 1 x nor with 1. Take it. What is that? Opposite. 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 Pe 0 here. And same thing. What will happen? 1. Like. So, what do you see? That this don't care is replicating. Means your variable is passing. Yeah, exactly. It is passing the same way. So, if you are giving here, if in a, um, okay, wait. Yeah. So, suppose if in a x not gate, if you are taking any of the input as 1 and this is a, so it will pass the variable. Okay. If you will take here as 0, so it will complement the variable. This you need to understand regarding XOR gate and x not gate. For XOR gates, okay, uh, for XOR gates, what will happen? And for XOR gate, what will happen? For your XOR gate, you will have 0 as, as the, you know, powerful person, powerful value that will complement your another input. And for XOR, oh, I'm so sorry, it's not 0. For your XOR, for your XOR, we have 1, okay, and for x naught we have 0, okay. So, this is all regarding these two operators, bitwise and operators and bitwise or operators, bitwise XOR operators and bitwise XOR operators. See, I have already answered you these questions, I guess, how this 1 and, uh, you know, this don't care is uh, acting as a don't care here. I have also answered you for and or XOR and XNOR. So, I guess by here, things are clear to you. I have told you 4 things that you have never studied any gate. Okay, whenever you are, you know, starting. So, you have to keep 4 things in your mind. Okay, what are the disabled inputs for AND gates? So, what was the disabled input for AND gates? What was the OR gate for AND gates? What was the NAND gate for AND gates? NOR gate के लिए क्या था और किस केस में XOR और XNOR inverter की तरीके काम कर रहे हैं ठीक है तो ये चीज़ है मैंने कहा था आपको you have to keep in mind how come AND gate के लिए disable input was 0 OR gate के लिए it was 1 NAND के लिए 0 NOR के लिए 1 and for XOR your value was 1 which is making the other input which is pushing the other input to be complemented okay and for x naught you had 0. These are the important points that you need to understand. And whenever you are getting confused about anything that don't care, don't care, what will happen, the result, just take assume any of the values between 0 and 1. Okay. And then see what is happening here. Okay. Now coming to the next part. Yeah. Okay. So, do you also have to understand that the, what is the important point that we need to understand here? Abhi tak, what you are doing, you are taking two values that were vectors. A and B were two 3-bit vectors, okay? Then you are storing that value to a vector again. C was also a vector. But what happens if I am taking two vectors, I am handing or I am oring or I am exhoring them, but I am storing the result in a 
scalar. So that's a tricky part. What will happen? See the result here. What will happen? See here. Whenever see f is a scalar type, a and b are vector type. Okay, and you are doing this operation. F is equal to a and b. Suppose you are doing this. So what will happen? It will take the LSBs. It will take the LSBs. Okay, it will perform the AND operation on LSBs for both A and B, and then it will result. Uh, it will restore the result in C. Okay, suppose for example, I think I have taken this. Yeah, see, this is very important to remember that if you have a scalar, so your vector weights will only work on your LSBs. So uh, for this, your LSB is A. This is your LSB. This is your LSB. Similarly, for A also, this is your MSB. This is your LSB. So A zero will be ended with B zero, and the result will be stored in. The result will be stored in. So suppose you are taking this example. What is A zero? This is your A zero. This is your B zero, and your ending. So your ending zero and one. So answer is zero. Getting it? So by here, things have been clear to you. What is happening and how it is happening? Okay, shall we we'll move to next slide also? At the same time, yeah. Coming to the next part, which is, ah, which is logical operators. See, अभी तक आपने देखा in bitwise operator. What you have seen? We were taking vectors. We were getting answers in vectors also. But in logical operators, what will happen? Logical operator will produce the result either as true or false. Either it's a one or it's a zero. Okay, it will have only one bit of result. Okay. So what are the operators? See, this is, this will also work on individual bits of operand, but it will produce the result as single bit only. Okay. This you need to keep in mind. Now see, this is the logical not operation. Simple है, logical not है. It will complement the things. Whatever if you have, if you have written zero, it will do one. It will have one. You have zero. Okay. Now this is your logical and operator, and this is your logical or operators. For these operators, these logical operator, you will be having two operands. Number of operands two, and for not, you will be having number of operands as one. ठीक है? So चलिए अब इनको भी एक-एक करके discuss कर लेते हैं. Okay. So coming to the very first example, क्या है यहाँ पे very first example? What you are saying here? Suppose same चीज हमने यहाँ पे A, B, C के examples ले रखे हैं. These are examples of three bit vectors. सबसे पहले ये भी चीज लिया है. अगर we are talking about scalars, scalar operands, okay? Scalar operands means they will be of one bits only. ठीक है? So देखिए what is happening here? This operator performs once complement. As I told you, this will अच्छा in bitwise you had this tilde, okay? So this was also performing the ones complement. Here this not also performs the ones complement, okay? So if you are talking about the scalars, so this will act the same way, okay? And how it is differing in vectors that I am going to tell you. But you understand? See, it has the same effect as this in bitwise, okay? ये लाइन लिखी हुई है। So for example, I have taken W is equal to zero. W is a scalar here. I have assumed W as a scalar. So if W is zero, so what will happen if you write F is equal to complement of W? You will get one. If you are writing F is equal to tilde of W, so this was this is also one. So this is all about scalar operands. Okay. So if I talk about the vector operands, sorry. If I talk about the vector operands, then how it is working? Now see. If I talk about, yeah, how do you mean f is equal to not of a? But here a is a three-bit vector. So what is happening? First of all, all the individual bits are getting summed together, are getting all together, summed together. Okay, and then we are complementing it. Okay, then what? What are we doing? We are complementing. Okay, so this you need to understand. Okay, how it is happening? Suppose I am taking the example as one zero zero. So what will happen if you are giving f is equal to not of a? So first of all, a की जितनी भी bits हैं, they will be summed together. So one plus zero plus zero will result in one, and one's complement is zero. Okay. So this way, how how your result is coming? Your result is coming in the form of 
scalar it's a scalar result although you are taking a vector operand but your result is producing a single bit only so this is important for remembering in logical operators okay so here also you have taken a and of b see double and when you are using it comes under logical when you were, when you were using single and it was coming under bit wise and okay so what is happening here see this is a2 a1 and then a0 these will be summed together and then b2 b1 b0 they will be summed together okay so suppose i have taken the example as 1 0 0 and then the other example i have taken as 0 1 0 sum 1 sum 1 okay and then 1 and 1 what will be the answer 1 okay now coming to this part what is equal to a or of b or we need, first of all individually all the bits of a will be individually summed together all the bits of b will be individually summed together and then the answer will be produce uh, answer will get produced for example 100 so here we will get 1 010 here we will get 1 and then 1 plus 1 the answer is 1 okay so i hope by here things are clear to you for vector operands also how we are doing things okay how logical operators performing so we have done we have seen so far okay coming to okay so this slide actually i have kept for making you guys understand um yeah for making you guys understand about xor and xor see there thing uh, you know there we are making something abhi maine aapko two table samjhaya and i told you that uh, xor was working as a inequality detector whereas xor was working as a equality detector but बट इसका एक और भी रोल है उस रोल को थोड़ा सा हम यहाँ पे एक्स और एक्स नोर के बारे में समझेंगे ठीक है सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वही टू टेबल सपोज करिए मेकिंग अ टेबल फॉर थ्री बेड्स ठीक है तो चलिए थ्री बेड्स के बारे में कॉम्बिनेशन लिख लेते हैं फाइन तो पहले हम क्या करेंगे पहले हम रिजल्ट लिखेंगे एक्स और का देन हम बगल में रिजल्ट लिखेंगे एक्स नॉर का ओके सो हमें पता है जीरो इज ओवर जीरो इज जीरो एंड जीरो इज ओवर जीरो इज अगेन जीरो सो दिस इज जीरो जीरो इज ओवर जीरो इज जीरो जीरो इज ओवर वन इज वन अगेन जीरो इज ओवर वन इज वन वन एक्स ओवर जीरो इज अगेन वन जीरो इज ओवर वन इज वन एंड वन इज ओवर वन इज जीरो so this way i think you guys can fill this table okay fine so what do you see here dekhi agar hum number of ones ki baat kare how many number of ones are there here number of ones is 1 number of ones is 1 number of ones is 2 chaliye main iske liye bhi ek wo bana de rahi hu ek column bana de rahi hu number of ones theek hai dekhi yahan pe the number of ones yahan 0 okay here number of ones is 1 here number of one is 1 Number of one is two. Number of one is one, two, two, and then three. So, आप एक चीज देखो that whenever number of ones are odd, then you are getting, then you are getting output as one. Means क्या पता चला हमें कि XOR जो है it acts as a odd number of Once detector very important so very important you should know that XOR work as a odd number of ones detector when odd number of ones you, you can directly write this output as you can directly write this output as one suppose you are doing a stream zero 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 one 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 zero zero one zero one Just count the number of ones and I'm saying that XOR ka result batayiye. Within a second count ones one two three four four means four ones even no output is zero. यहाँ पे कौन one होता तो output would have been one. ठीक है? हमेशा ध्यान रखना है that whenever the number of ones are odd, XOR will give will produce the output as one. So this was all about XOR. Now we have to understand about XOR also. वो पूरी डिवेलप चली गई. चलिए वी विल सी अबाउट एक्स नॉर इज वेल फॉर थ्री मिनट्स
फाइंड एक्सनॉर टेबल भी हमें फिल करनी है एक्सनॉर कैसे फिल करेंगे रुको एक्सनॉर को फिल करना है तो जीरो एक्सनॉर विद जीरो ओके दैट विल बी लाइक है लाइक है सेम विट है सो वन एंड वन एक्सनॉर विद जीरो विट बी जीरो ठीक है उसके बाद देखिए क्या है जीरो एक्सनॉर विद जीरो विल बी वन जीरो एक्स नॉट जीरो वुड बी वन एंड देन वन एंड वन विल बी वन अगेन ओके नाउ सी जीरो एक्स नॉर विद वन जीरो एक्स नॉर विद वन विल बी जीरो एंड जीरो जीरो विल बी वन जीरो एक्स नॉर विद वन जीरो जीरो विल बी एक्स नॉर विद वन अगेन इन इक्वालिटी है तो जीरो सिमिलरली इफ यू राइट यूर ऑल्सो यू विल गेट द आंसर एज दिस वे दिस इज फॉर दिस इज फॉर थ्री बिट्स दिस इज फॉर थ्री बिट ऑफ इनपुट थ्री बिट्स ऑफ इनपुट दिस इज वेयर अंडरस्टैंडिंग फॉर एक्सनोर ठीक है नाउ टॉक अबाउट फोर फोर बिट्स के लिए भी चलिए देख लेते हैं गेस्ट थोड़ा ज्यादा हो जा रहा है वन 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 चलो यहां तक हमें वी हैव ऑलरेडी रिटेन ओके सो नाउ अभी हमें इसका भी एक्सनोर करना है ठीक है सो चलिए इंडिविजुअली करते हैं एक्सनोर करेंगे तो देखिए क्या आ जाएगा जीरो एक्सनोर विद जीरो एक्स वन वन एक्सनोर विद जीरो इज जीरो अगेन जीरो एक्सनोर विद जीरो इज वन वो बट इज क्लियर दिस वन इज क्लियर चलिए नेक्स्ट पे आते हैं वॉट वी आर डूइंग वी आर एक्सनोरिंग वी आर एक्सनोरिंग ठीक है चलिए दूसरा करते हैं जीरो एक्स नॉर विद जीरो इज वन वन एक्स नॉर विद जीरो इज जीरो जीरो एक्स नॉर विद वन इज अगेन जीरो गेटिंग इट ठीक है सिमिलरली इसका करिए थर्ड वाले का जीरो एक्स नॉर विद जीरो इज वन वन विद वन इज वन वन विद जीरो इज जीरो अगेन ठीक है नाउ यू आर सी जीरो एक्स नॉर विद जीरो इज वन वन विद वन इज वन एंड देन वन विद वन इज अगेन वन So what you are seeing here is basically देखिए इसमें भी अगर आप इफ यू आर राइटिंग दिस टेबल इफ यू कंप्लीट दिस टेबल एंड यू ऑल्सो सी नंबर ऑफ वन सी नंबर ऑफ वन आर जीरो नंबर ऑफ वन आर वन नंबर ऑफ वन आर वन नंबर ऑफ वन आर टू चलिए थोड़ा सा और एग्जाम्पल कर लेते हैं तो आपको एक क्लियर अंडरस्टैंडिंग हो जाएगी नॉलेज सी दिस ऑल्सो हम जीरो एक्स नॉर वन इज जीरो एक्स नॉर ऑफ वन इज जीरो जीरो विद जीरो इज वन वन विद जीरो इज अगेन जीरो राइट Now see the next one. Zero is not with one is zero. Okay. Then zero with zero is one, and then one with one is one again. So what do you see here? Number of ones is one. Number of ones are two. So whenever there are number of um, whenever in a stream number of ones are even, so it is detecting that, right? Number of ones, देखिए यहाँ पे even आ रहे हैं. So we are getting the output as one. But what is happening here? यहां पर अगर आप देखो तो एक्स नॉर एंड एक्स नॉर वर्किंग सेम वे कैसे देखिए ये अगर एक्स नॉर का आउटपुट है तो एक्स नॉर का आउटपुट विल आल्सो बी सेम है एक्स नॉर भी यही होता है कि नंबर ऑफ वन एक्स नॉर अभी हमने एक्स नॉर को समझाता है एक्स नॉर इज अड नंबर ऑफ वन डिटेक्टर देखिए अगर आप इधर ही एक्स नॉर का भी बना दोगे टेबल वॉट विल आप वन वन जीरो वन जीरो जीरो एंड वन सी से Means, conclusion क्या है कंक्लूजन है बट यहां पर हमने देखा कि एक्स नॉर जो है वो हमारा इवन नंबर ऑफ वन डिटेक्टर है एंड राइट हेयर एक्स नॉर जो है आपका दिस इज योर इवन नंबर ऑफ वन डिटेक्टर है ना तो वट इज द कंक्लूजन ये डिटेक्टर तो यहां क्या हो रहा है तो आपको समझना क्या है आपको समझना है कि यस एक्स नॉर वर्क एज अवन नंबर ऑफ वन डिटेक्टर बट फॉर इवन नंबर ऑफ इनपुट वेन एवर दे आर आर इवन नंबर ऑफ इनपुट सी यहां पर कितने इनपुट थे हमारे पास अगर इसे मैं भी चीजें मान लें दीज वोर इनपुट ओके सो जब इवन नंबर ऑफ इनपुट होते हैं देन एक्स नॉर वर्क एज इवन नंबर ऑफ वन डिटेक्टर But when you have odd number of inputs A, B, C, then XOR and XNOR will work the same way. So moral of the story क्या है? 
moral of the story is for for odd number of for the number of reports okay your exon will work the same way the exon does and these two together will work as a odd number of ones detector ठीक है एंड व्हाट टॉक अबाउट इवन नंबर ऑफ इनपुट्स सी योर एग्जॉम इज गोइंग टू वर्क द सेम वे ऑलवेज इट इज ऑलवेज वर्किंग एज अ ऑड नंबर ऑफ वंस डिटेक्टर एक्स नॉट द केस में थोड़ा सा आपको कॉशियस रहना है फॉर इवन नंबर ऑफ इनपुट्स फॉर इवन नंबर ऑफ इनपुट्स योर एक्स नॉट विल वर्क एज even number of ones detector as well as xnor will be the complement of xor dekha tha na hum table mein we have seen this in our table we have seen this that it was getting complemented or whatever the output was of for xor it was getting complemented so these two things are very very important theek hai ye bahut dhyan dena aapko bahut important hai ye Very important. This pushing it is for that only. Very important. Okay. Chaliye.